In this lab, we're going to learn how to monitor our systems running processes and resource utilization. Now, normally the operating system can take care of itself, but sometimes things break. Errors occur, applications crash or hang up, and we've all been there. It's important to know how to inspect for these issues and how to restore a system back to use. Fortunately, we can do that with the system monitor. System Monitor is located under Applications, System Tools, and then System Monitor. And this is going to look very overwhelming at first. That's fine. That's okay. There's a lot going on, but it'll be simple soon enough once you're oriented around it. Let's expand the window and go through it. So we can see here every process name, which user is the process owner, how much CPU percentage is taken up by each process, and the ID or the identifier of each process itself. We can also see the memory, the disk read and write usage, and if any priority has been recorded. Clicking on the column header itself will sort the column. Next, we have the resources tab, and this displays the utilization of CPU, memory, and network traffic over time as a chart for us to get a high level overview of what's going on. And then finally, the file system tab, that gives us a snapshot of all the attached disks and storage in use. Now let's actually get a process going so we can see what happens. But first, let's go and bring this window docked to the right half of the screen. We can just drag it closer to the edge, a little shadow will appear, and that'll indicate that the docking is ready, and we let go. Now let's go and open up that text editor and observe what happens on the right-hand side. Now what's interesting is we can see a get it process appear here in the system monitor. So we can see that it's actually running from slash user slash bin, and that's where we said in the last lab, that holds all the user executable binaries and commonly used commands. And if we right click the process, we can click on properties, and we can find a lot more information about this specific process. For example, we can see exactly when that process started and additional memory consumption information. And while this is great for detecting anomalies, we're probably just gonna be using system monitor a lot more often to stop processes. Stopping processes can mean two things. Officially, stopping the process means that it is actually stopped. It can't continue and it won't end. Now, casually, you're going to hear people say to just stop the process. That might just mean to end the task itself. And we'll look at that shortly. For now, let's actually stop the process. And we'll get a big warning. And we want to go ahead and stop that process right now. Now, just because a process is stopped doesn't mean that it won't keep receiving input. And we can prove that. We can actually select our text editor and then just hit your keyboard Type in a bunch of characters next to it, and then we'll continue the process and see what happens. So you can see here, that's that secret text that I was typing while the process was frozen. I just typed, I am typing some text here. And then when we hit continue, all that text appeared. This actually extends beyond receiving input from your keyboard. Let's do this one more time. We're going to freeze it. I'm going to type some text right now, and then I'm actually going to stop the process again. But next, I'm going to try to actually terminate the process and watch what will happen. If I hit end process right now and then hit end process again, nothing happens. But if I go and I right click back on the get it process itself, when I select continue, the process will actually terminate. So this is important to understand because this is actually what happens when maybe your browser crashes, something hangs up and you have to restart the application or just turn it off and on again, right? Like that old saying. The reason being is that the process itself has, has stopped, it's frozen. It's no longer able to respond. And that's why sometimes we just have to select end process. And sometimes that doesn't even work. So there are actually even more powerful ways to terminate processes, which we're gonna be looking at in future labs. In the meantime, just know that whenever you need to inspect what's happening with a process, if you want to see if something's bottlenecked, this is where you actually wanna go. You wanna pull up something like System Monitor and troubleshoot.